In this video, we're tasting four triples, two from the United States and two from Belgium. Ross had a wedding that he wanted to bring a triple to, so we brewed up a triple and we tasted these during that brew day. If you haven't checked out that video, make sure to do that. The link's in the description below. The beer turned out great and everyone at the wedding seemed to enjoy it. Yeah. This is delicious. I'm glad you like it, man. It's very delicious. I'm, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh -huh. Let's start with uh, the old world here. Let's get into the classics. So. Right here, West Mall, this is your gold standard. This is your first triple, first beer referred to as a triple. Okay. Maybe incorrect on this, the 1930s was when this name came into sort of common usage. Uh, the Belgians have been brewing beer for hundreds of years, but they called them different things, uh, and the sort of like common codification, that sort of nomenclature, single, double, triple, quadruple. That was like the early kind of sort of interwar years there in Belgium. Recovering from one, gearing up for the second, needed some strong beers. Let's have a triple or two. It's bottle condition, but live yeast as it well. It is. Okay. So glass is another big part so of the we, kind yeah. of... No, it's good. A little wet uh, a little wet on the surface Not is bad. actually what you want. Oh. Yeah, so glass is a big part of the kind of drinking tradition in Belgium. Every Trappist monastery Every little one-barrel family-owned farmhouse brewery out in the countryside has their own unique cup, their own unique little glass for their particular beer. They love glass. The Belgians are kind of famous for the tulip shape of glass, something with a stem on it, something with a little bit of, I call it the schnoz cannon. You can really get your nose down in there and get kind that, of smell the, smell. Uh, the foam on the beer. The flavor of beer, but most of it's smell, right? The aroma, yeah, yeah. so much of taste is smell. Your, your shaker pint here, uh, really sort of lets a lot loose when you put it because it doesn't narrower. Mm -hmm. it's narrower okay. so let's uh pop maybe the, do a side by side uh, glass a side comparison by, oh, Ooh, dang heck yeah the safe pour the safe pour they, there's something like eight steps to a traditional belgian beer pour we um, heard that carbonation she is oh yeah carbonated frothy to style is it a pretty highly carbonated beer you know the bottle conditioning, I right. think, is going to account for that. The, they're putting yeast and a little drop of sugar water right. in here um, when they're bottling these beers. And uh, these are actually uh, two great examples of a classic Belgian beer pour. So there's no such thing as too much foam on okay. a good Belgian pour of beer. Um, yeah, look at that. You're gonna want about one quarter beer in the glass and three quarters foam. Uh, that's how they pour them, man. No that, that's that's no fooling. Okay, um, that's yeah. It. So that's why when we popped the top, we had tons of carbonation. Mm -hmm. they, they're putting a little bit, probably more priming sugar in there, or putting it in the bottles when there's still a little bit of um, sugars for the yeast. To yeah. Eat, so. and, okay. Or they'll just be unpasteurized beers, okay. and those they'll cork and cage because all of that. To keep live it yeast. Plop it out or plop it out. Yeah, Fly exactly. It out. It'll explode in your cellar. Gotcha. And I think this honestly might be my the first triple I've ever had. First triple you've ever had. Almost forty years old, Ross. Wow. So it's high time. Cool. Looks good in the glass. Golden in color. A um, little bit of a haze. That'd be from the, the yeast. Mm -hmm, from the yeast in there. Dumped in there. <laughs> uh huh. Enough pinky out. You know, fart smelling here. Let's have a beverage, man. Yeah, man. So, I smell malt. That's about it. Just throwing mm -hmm. that out there. Mm-hmm. Mm. Bubbles. Carbonation. Not a whole lot of hop bite. A little bit of sort of sulfury taste. Um, you get a lot of heat. Yeah, definitely. You can taste the booze yeah. in this. What's the percent on this son of a gun? 9.5. 9.5. This is a great beer to pair with a meal because of the alcohol volume. If you're just having one of these casually, the yeah. flavor profile and sort of that booziness, yeah. you're going to want to eat something. It would be, just be you're... nice with that Christmas roast. Or mm -hmm. like yeah. That. Go shoot a deer, man. Go get some venison on the table and yeah. have a triple. That's the move. Um, I never shot a gun, Ross. 
Let's go shoot guns, yeah, bro. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, love to shoot guns with you, man. All right. Yeah. What could possibly go wrong? Who wants to see us shoot some guns? Let's drink some guns. Drink shoot some, guns. some triples, man. <laughs> as they say. Um, I would say it's um, thicker than what I'm used to drinking. Mm-hmm. A little more syrupy. Full syrupy, body. Full body, yeah. I mean... That's nice, though. It's sweet. Mm-hmm. It is sweet, but there's something kind of masking the sweetness with this. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's not like cloying, mm-mm. like sweet. It's just... I don't know if that's West... very nice. It is. I don't know if West Mall seasons their triple. The Belgians are very uh, into getting crafty with their flavors mm-hmm. and their adjuncts and their spices. So you're familiar with the Reinheitsgebot laws, mm-hmm. the Bavarian beer purity laws, uh, that say What's beer it? has only three grains, ingredients. Bar- Grain. Grains, grains, barley, grains, <laughs> grains uh, water, ho- uh, yeast, right? Grains, water, hops. Oh, okay. uh, Because they use natural fermentation. Well, they didn't know what yeast was. Gotcha. So these laws were enacted in the early 1600s gotcha. before microbiology before Louis Pasteur gotcha uh, before Bill Nye and uh, (laughs) yeah everybody died of the plague huge bummer Um, but yeah uh, the Belgians have never believed in restricting ingredient uh, you know ingredients at all but also they were sort of like economic purity laws because Belgium was brewing dank ass beer and like selling it to people and Bavaria is very like proximal to that region of Flanders and they're like you can't sell your beer here because it has these ingredients in it that violate our laws uh, so yeah so economics well, baby like so when you're thinking triple is this something you're thinking like winter time like to warm you up or do you is this something you would actually order this time of year this coming in the spring summer for me it is more of a yeah fall and winter beverage. Mm-hmm. I really skew towards the more sessionable beers. I'd order one of these again. Yeah, cool. Well, I dug this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, should we drink another one? Yes. Um, should we rinse our glasses? Mm-hmm. Probably. Here, you want to rinse, and I'll grab the next beer. What's on deck? So what's on deck? Um, we've been talking about old Belgium, which they do just call Belgium. <laughs> And so on in Europe. I want to talk about New Belgium. This is my brewery. Uh, this is our triple. Um, I'm a big fan. I'm going to pop this and pour it in the the glasses that we've cleaned out. Um, is this bottle conditioned as well? Or no? This is bottle conditioned is. as well. Okay. Slightly lower alcohol by volume than the West Mall. Ours is 8.5%. Okay. Um, still big. Still big, um, but not, you know... Nine and a half it has a nice big head as well. Mm-hmm. Not nearly as big as the other one, but... How are we doing? How did I do an eyeball on that pour? Uh, it's hard to do different glasses, yeah. it's hard to say. Cool. Um, it's pretty, pretty color. Pretty color in the glass. Clear. clear, golden. I mean, clarity is a big thing. Do you uh, filter these? Belgium beers, yes. Yeah. Um, the, you know, clar. You look at it, you see it. Got that nice white white head on it um do you know what hops are in this let me get back to you on that um i do know we season this with a little bit of coriander to kind of cut a little bit of that sweetness on the palate smell is a little different yeah um i think i'm getting like way more yeast esters definitely and a little bit of that coriander kind of almost baking spice vibe mm. on this one that's me nice body nice aroma definitely a similar mouthfeel mm-hmm. that one might be a little thicker but that's also boozier it is and this is this comes across as not as boozy to me it doesn't this is a real sneak attack yeah. in a glass like this this was you could taste the heat of the mm-hmm. alcohol not in a bad way it's very pleasant but i feel like the new belgium one like you could pound a few of these and not realize you're in eight it was and a half percent. Eight and a half, and yeah. then you're in too deep, and you're like, "What am I doing? Right? What How am I getting home? <laughs> exactly. Where am I? Um, We've so, all yeah. had those days, but yeah, this is. I wouldn't guess eight and a half. Yeah. This is one of those beers that uh, I keep coming back to. Um, big fan. And stacks up well against the West Mall. I think, you know, we are big fans uh, of Old Belgium, uh, New Belgium, and to kind of try and pay homage exactly to the traditions that they have there. One of the things um, that we're stoked on are bottles. So check these bottles out here, man. 
Um, this is a little thing oh, that like cool. New Belgium is, you know, in, in, in an effort to sort of pay respect to the brewing tradition of Belgium. Uh, so we went and asked uh, West Mall here, hey, we've noticed that you do this cool thing on your bottle. You have this little like cuff, this yeah. little ridge. Theirs says Trappist because they're a monastery. Ours does not because we are not. <laughs> um, but we were like, we think that's really cool. Could we do that? Yeah, and West Mall was like, "Yes, you may," and you know the lawyers got together and figured it out, and uh, now we have this cool little sort of flourish that's on our twelve sweet. ounce bottles that's as really sweet. a tip of the cap, just trying to pay our respects to the traditions. Um, um, so yes to this. Yeah. So, in terms of taste, is a double in a single in the same taste or they totally different so gotcha. a double is going to have a big dark specialty roasted malt grain bill and is going to have even more of that sort of estery almost i get like doubles i get almost like a banana bread vibe off of okay um and are going to be slightly lower alcohol by volume right um but so completely different beer completely different okay. beer yeah doubles are you know, traditionally what are sold at the monasteries. Um, if you're a monk, you put a rope around your waist, you take a vow of silence, you sell some beer to the public, you're having a nice life. And uh, the singles are what you drink on the daily so you don't get the plague in the before time, gotcha. before science. Right. And, uh, yeah. Is there a quad? There's a quad, yeah. So quads. What's that, like 15? Yeah, it's like barley wine territory. Okay. And a quad is like... <sighs> is that like super special occasion beer? It, or like I, I just want to get blacked out? Blackout, I feel like a quad is, it's, you know... I can't talk to anybody. It's a it's a full moon at midnight, and you're standing outside. You've got, like, one of those, like, she-she, like a 10-ounce funky little glass gotcha. of beer, and you're staring up at the night sky, gotcha. and you're thinking about your life, and you're having a quad. You're, you know... Quads are for, like, existential crises. Um, it's either that or you're in the gutter. True. The that's... <laughs> yeah. Um, one leads to the other. Um, and then what's... We got one more. Oh, buddy, we got two more. Oh. Uh-huh. Um, it's going to be good. It's going to be a good day. Mm -hmm. Another beer from Old Belgium here. Um, so, the homie Brian at Tasty Beverage recommended this. Um, okay. I am not familiar with this triple. Dule Teve. Um, pronunciation, awful. But uh, he said this is, you know, a favorite of his. Okay. And that they do some sort of, like, cool ship sort of spontaneous thing with this Just open beer. fermentation. Yeah. Definitely. So is this bottle conditioned as well? This is bottle conditioned as well. So yeah. is that just, you have to have a bottle conditioned? Is that the idea? No, you wow. don't have to, but. Look at that. that. That just, that's a perfect Belgian pour right there. That much. Look at that. Peter Buchard is smiling. You're going to want about 95 one hundredths foam, <laughs> 5 one hundredths beer. In 5 to 95? Can, yeah, reduce those fractions if you want. Um, let's see how I do here. Okay, slightly better. Don't worry, I'm going to see. Oh, yeah. Oh, she that. came right up. Yeah. Beauty. Look at that. A little head. darker than the other ones? Mm hmm. It is. Well, a little, a little bit more particulate in there. And that could just be the yeast. Let me uh, here. Let me hit you with some more beer here. Because we just bought these, so they were like getting stirred up in the car too. I definitely was doing the the sort of arm swinging. My, my my arms are longer than I am tall. I'm a knuckle dragging homunculus. My walk back to the car definitely agitated these oh. beers. Um. Yeah, look at that. Okay. Let's put that right there. I like the label on this one. Yeah, me too. So give me about 10 minutes, and I'll be able to get in there for a sip. Yeah. Dude, Just look at that head, how yeah, pillowy it is. I know, gorgeous. Looks so good. A little more particulate. Not quite, and I mean that's the bottle conditioning yep. for you, right and there. Not that is, the, and they're yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you just if we let that bottle sit for a while mm -hmm. and you poured it and left the yeast behind, yeah, you, you wouldn't have that. 
for real. Maybe. maybe it looks pretty maybe cool. Not as it much. looks like a little, you know, like the Hubble it's definitely telescope, darker. like a galaxy forming out there. They you know, like they do those like infrared images and it like picks up the hydrogen. It looks like that sort of a yeah. thing in the glass right there. Yeah. Space, well, should we man, get in there? The final frontier. It's where the Trappists are headed. Let's get in there. Again, I'm not getting a ton off the nose. Mm -hmm. So we gotta put that head on it. Mm. Definitely a maltier. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, got a lot more of that sort of caramely malt body on this. I wonder if you're doing like Vienna malt in there. Or... Yeah, it just it tastes. I mean, very similar in color, maybe slightly darker, but it tastes darker. You yeah, know what I'm it's saying? more malty. It's got like a real sort of, but like a caramel malt yeah. sort of a vibe to it. Definitely, I see what you're saying. I'm getting almost like a honey. Yeah, a little more residual sweetness. Definitely. A little uh, chewier, I think they mm -hmm. call it. It's got more of that sort of like ale-y mm -hmm. sort of like chewiness to it. I agree with it that. hangs out a little longer. Don't dislike it. No. I would say this is more syrupy. Yeah, it is. Like, kind of like rubitussin y. I get that. But not the taste of it. Not but just the, the like, texture. Like that. It's got that fuller. It hangs out for a minute. Yeah. Um, not a necessarily bad way. Just cause that's what it kind of reminds me of. It was like that syrupy. Mm hmm. It's kind of very different. It is less other. aromatics coming off of the nose here, despite the big. The big head. Um, I mean, all I'm picking up is just like malt. Yeah, the grain really the grain. Kind of eclipses it. this one. I wonder what the malt bill is on this. I bet we could look that up. Yeah, I mean, New Belgium, mm -hmm. I would say I got more, a lot more yeast character. Mm -hmm. I would say this was a little more boozy. Mm -hmm. And this, I would say, is like caramel, honey. It's a lot of heat coming through this, too. I will bet you that both of these breweries are using Dingaman's malt to make uh, their triples. I know for a fact that we use a Dingaman's malt in our triple. Um, but it's kind of cool that we have access to the same... On the homebrew level, yeah. ...raw materials. I'd be interested to see what exactly... What the, the difference is. They're like... So Brian was like, yeah, they, they cool ship part oh, of that's the spear. True. So they, that could be... So we said they pitch like a traditional yeast and then they also cool shit. Like it. whatever happens, happens. Yeah. I'd love to know a little more about what their process is. Mm -hmm. Like what sort of microbiology they're working with here. Drink and triple. Mm -hmm. See and double. Feel and single. single or yeah. Feel and single. Not act. <laughs> whatever Don't you act. want, pal. Um, yeah. Mm. Should we have one more? As long as we're here. We've had, you know, three triples. Three times three is nine. One so to one and a half one. each. They call it a baker's triple. It's one called and a half. four triples. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that we're being responsible. We are. Do you know how much hate I'm gonna get from YouTube, our YouTube channel? Tell me. For not having ever had a triple. It's gonna be, be like, hey man, what's your problem? Yeah. I'll be like, hey man. Whatever. I grew up on Jenny Cream Ale. Hey man, go <laughs> fuck yourself. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You're like, uh, Jenny Cream Ale's were a dollar for 16 ounces at the bar I grew so up. So that's what I'm drinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, last is uh, Allagash, another uh, American They're out brewery. of uh, Portland, Maine. Yes. Beautiful brewery. Let's pop the top on this Allagash here. Oh yeah. I like their, I like their cap. Yeah. I like their beer. This Allagash Ooh, is different color, right? Yeah, more I would say yellow. Yeah, like uh, less of that deep like gold. gold Interesting. Yeah. That's it looks like, cool. It looks like a, just like a lager of sorts. Yeah, Allagash is a brewery after my own heart. They are. So this is bottled ten twenty four eighteen. Okay. So they're all probably about yeah. the same age. This is nine. Yeah, nine even, nine across the board. And they're not giving us a whole lot. Okay, more, so it's more, passion uh, fruit and honey. Yeah, more poetry than a hard data here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're they're celebrating storied Belgian style. After this is the uh, the italics at the bottom of the Magic the Gathering card, not the functional uh, aspects of what the card does. This is your this is your 
sort of legendary tale. I'll have here. to Google uh, Richard Garfield. No, what game Wizards are you of the about? Coast. Doesn't matter. Okay. Um, let's drink a beer. Uh, skull pressed. Cheers. No, no. Uh, minimal aroma. Mm-hmm. Ooh, but like bubbly, like carbonated. It's interesting. Wow. I think this might be the most, like, bubbly, little tickle your tongue, mouth feel kind of beer of these four here. Maybe because it all stayed in the beer and didn't come out in the pour? Yeah, could do. I wonder if they're um, not bottled. I tried to pour it with a little bit of head on it, but it didn't do that. I wonder, yeah. I wonder if it's, it may not, it is bottle conditioned. Okay. Yeah. So the bottle conditioning as well. Yeah. Yeah, but their head is, uh, not even in the same ballpark. Yeah, interesting. I wonder what's going on with that. But I get what you're saying, like mm -hmm. in terms of like when it hits your tongue, it really just sort of pops, dances around there. It's great. It's very nice. Yeah. Honey notes for sure. Mm -hmm. Like, it does not taste like a nine percent. Not getting like any of that this warming is like in the New Belgium mm -hmm. place where you can not really sit but, down and have a few and be in a bad. And place. then realize what you've done. And think about your life. Wow. I'm very into this. If I can get more yeast character out of this one, too. Yeast character. And, yeah, that sort of estery, like, yeast flavor in a good way. I feel I get a little more hop character with this also. More so than I have with the Anything other three. Anything else. Um, I wonder if that could be, like, an age thing or traveling thing too or, or just, I mean it's not a hobby beer it's not a hobby beer but there is a hot presence in this beer in the way that there is not in either of yeah. these other three triples if you handed any of these to me with my mental experience I'd be like these are all excellent yeah. beers uh, which they are so what I think it is this here here is my blurb just my yeah. hot my hot take on these three beers they each have a different way of sort of masking that booziness that they're at that is subtle and not like heavy handed. Gotcha. So West Mall, your OG, um, this is just that minimal amount of heat, just like the texture of the beer. Mm -hmm. It's not like, hey, this is booze. It's just sort of that subtle warming quality yeah. where it's like, oh, this is a little boozy. And I, and I, mm -hmm. I feel like from this tasting, that's the booziest, but mm -hmm. that was also the first one. The first one. And I've had four beers. Maybe the, so like, yeah. Most As you drink, apt to yeah. judge it. New Belgium, it's the spice. It is that coriander that yeah. we add to it that sort of cuts some of that. Uh, you know, and some yeast notes from there as well. Exactly. Um, this uh, fun like word honey. to pronounce. It's the grain, yeah. like the maltiness Whatever kind of eclipses. Malt. It's it's a malt character, but it's like a caramel malt character, not like a sugary sweet right. or like a boozy malt character. Right. And then this, it's that little bit of hot bite that I get on this Allagash Triple that sort of masks, hey, it's 9%, doesn't taste like 9%. No. I got to pee after right, you. Here. Uh, here. No, we're doing a full ounce of the steering gold. Woo! Couple of four triples, baby. Fucking Christ. 